Probably. Right. Hey, chemistry nerds. Thanks so much for all coming along. I think I was just uh, sitting there for way too long. I'm just going to put the light on. Hang on. The sun is going down. Right. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for coming. Really appreciate you here. Nice to see you, Amira. Thanks so much for coming. Mate, it's nice to have you here. I've currently got 12 people here, which is excellent. It's not a bad show. Although I do seem to have a good few number of year 10s who are coming along. And the year 10s are coming along in order to... Uh, in order to pick up all the stuff on chemical tests because they're currently working it through in their GCSE specification at the moment in lessons. So all those year 11s that are here, we're going to be doing a crash course going through chemical tests, all the equations and all the colors that you guys are going to need to know. And can I please just say that <clears throat> the webinar will be useful for picking up the equations and all those key methods that everyone's going to be needing. But of course, it's not going to help you remember your colors. You've still got to actually sit down and learn these guys. They are free marks in your GCSE. And I really, really want to stress that this is well worth learning properly. These chemical tests, I know that the majority of you guys are going to be going on to do A-level chemistry. And the chemical tests never disappear. They haunt you for the rest of your chemistry careers. And as Winkit well knows, Winkit... Uh, sat in in one of my year 13 webinars, uh, or at least the mock review, and um, the chemical tests were making an appearance, and he was amazed and made a comment on the chat saying the fact that they were there and that they were still there. We don't reteach them. We, we tend to, us chemists tend to just make the assumption that you guys have got them, you've learned them properly, and these are worth learning properly. So... Definitely worthwhile doing it properly and getting them under your belt as soon as possible. There's only, what, like nine weeks left until your exam starts. And the sooner you've got these, the better. Okay. So I'm going to do the usual thing. I'm going to share my, my screen with you guys. Share. I'm going to share my screen with you guys. Thanks for coming, Emmelyn. Thanks for coming, coming Yehan. Thanks for coming, Chan. Thanks, Winky. It's nice to see you all here. Really nice to have you all all present and accounted for, which is excellent. Uh, now, I'm hoping that this webinar is going to be one of the shorter of the webinars. Um, and I'll do my best to keep it kind of short and sweet. Do my usual thing of going through. I mean, any of you guys who, sit, who are in my lessons know that I, I do genuinely like using the, the learning objectives to make sure that I cover everything that you guys need. So the first one is know the tests for all cations and anions. Please note that I'm using that term cations and anions already. Second one is write equations. Now these are tricky and they're definitely gonna need some practice on your behalf. Next one is write methods for each test. And then my fourth learning objective is just to make sure that you guys have got others because the, the be all and end, you guys have a list that's given to you by the specification. And you know what? I thought I'd include it today. I thought I'd do something different on the webinar. So what I did was that I jumped onto your specification and I thought I'd have a look at, I just want to check that you guys are able to see this all okay and that the quality is good enough for you guys to see. If you guys want to, if you, by the way, if you check the settings and go to, and, and you go to the little cog picture in the bottom right-hand corner, you can select the quality of 720 HD, and that's the one that will allow you to see everything really, really clear, clearly. So go for that one. It's the best one. Uh, I've got my second laptop running on the lowest quality to hopefully not uh, impinge on my bandwidth. Uh, but I've cut this straight out of yours. Please note, dual scientists, anyone here who's doing dual scientists, every single part of this specification block is all, um, it, none of it is in bold capital, is in bold. 
What that means is every single part of this needs to be known by both triple scientists and dual scientists. So I'm going to do the usual thing of, I'm going to run through the gases first. Now, year 11, I have put on YouTube, I put this on yesterday, or maybe today, I think maybe this morning, I put on a video of me performing every single one of these tests. And it's nice just to watch it, go through each one that I'm doing, and then I'm gonna expand on each one in the webinar today and describe those tests. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna focus um, initially on the gas tests. Now these gas tests, and of course, uh, these gas tests in terms of teaching wise, often get spread out. They often get spread out through year seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. They're very rarely done by a chemistry teacher as a big chunk. And you know what? I definitely think, I definitely think that uh, perhaps as a chemist in, in, in uh, when we're doing, when we finish the specification, I will happily do a practical with you guys in my class where you guys get to come and do all the gas tests together and see them all being done. So um, I've got Kay and Tang saying, yes, dual science, that's me, excellent. So this applies to you as well. None of all, this entire webinar today will cover both triple and dual. So all of you need to be there. Okay, so the first thing is, let's quickly run through our gas tests. So the gas tests that you guys need to know, and you don't need many, you need to do hydrogen gas, H2. Please note that I'm using the symbols rather than uh, the word. Do remember to read the questions. RTFQ, read the full question, year 11. If they ask you for the name, give the name. If they ask you for a formulae, give H2 as your formulae. Do watch out for that. So the hydrogen gas test is an easy one. It's probably the most well-known of all the gas tests. People, of course, know it as it's, it's called the squeaky pot test. But I think really what I need to make sure I emphasize here is that there's a method and that each of these gas tests have one. And so they're commonly either two or three marks. So is it just me? Um, is it just mine that's lagging? No, th there probably is a bit of a lag. I'm gonna actually, in fact, entirely pause the video on my second laptop and hopefully I'll be able to maximize my, uh, my bandwidth. Hopefully that'll be a little bit better. Okay. So the method is, now I'm actually gonna give the three point method. If this is three marks, then we're going to do collect a sample, collect a sample. This is probably the most missed point. And this is usually because it's not, doesn't appear on mark schemes because most of the time it's two. Collect a sample of gas. Now it's nice for me to talk about gas collection. So, and, and because this makes an appearance every now and again, and there are two methods for collecting gases. And if we get gas collection, then these are usually done either by delivery under water. I uh, shouldn't do it as 3D. Delivery under water. And you can see how quickly my diagram's appearing. So this is, I've got a delivery tube. I'm underwater and I'm going to collect the bubbles underwater and that's going to fill up with my gas. So we can, we can collect underwater or we can collect in a gas syringe. Uh, and the gas syringe diagrams, again, very similar, conical flask, cork, delivery tube, but this time we have our gas syringe with our scales. It's rather an odd piece of equipment drawing the gas syringe because you must show your scale. Uh, so there's our gas syringe, our two ways of collecting. Just to, in, just to let you know that the gas syringe is always better. This is the ideal method for collecting a gas and the reason for that is because gases are soluble. Gases are lost, are lost since dissolve in water. Since dissolve in water. Um, so this method, not ideal. You'll get less than expected, but in the gas syringe, it's a far better method. So we're going to collect a sample of gas. Next, we're going to light gas, light gas using lit lit splint uh, i'm tempted to draw you that as well but i won't and that is your two mark method it's as simple as that i am going to focus on key things the split here is lint 
but lint is lit. Whereas if you're doing something like oxygen, it's glowing. And the results, please make sure you recognize that there is a difference in the questions between the, the method you're doing and the result. The result is you will get, uh, get squeaky, squeaky pop sound. So that's our, our results. Three mark question. But in reality, if two, the main key things are light gas using lit splint, and you will get a squeaky pop sound. So two marks, but collecting sample if it was the third mark. Hydrogen is probably the most well-known of our gas tests, and it's the, the one that I, I'm least worried about. But it also makes appearance an awful lot of the time. Okay, moving swiftly on. We're going for the oxygen gas test. Note my state symbol appearing. Uh, by the way... Just to also, at this point, throw in that there's an equation for the test. Because we're lighting this, the hydrogen is burning. It's reacting with oxygen to form water, and I can balance my equation. So that's the equation that's occurring in that, react in that uh, chemical test. So we're on to oxygen. Now, oxygen, I'll, I'll put it up to there. Oxygen method, keep it nice and simple. Collect gas. It's nice to just repeat a process in chemistry it's all about patterns and sticking with things that work so collect gas using glowing and that's the key word here folks here 11 using a glowing splint place in tube place in tube and we're going to get a result of splint will relight so that's again a very well known test but far less known than the hydrogen one students do make mistakes and again it's nice for me to talk you guys through a method just to make sure that everyone is clear in what they're saying note that there's a there's a pattern here we've got collect gas perform the steps in the method and your results are what you're going to see Okay, next, by the way, there is no equation for that since it's wood that you're burning, it's the splint. You're simply adding more oxygen, which means you're going to increase the rate of combustion because 21% in the atmosphere is very low, which means, of course, you're going to have an increased rate of reaction which will reignite the splint. So there's our oxygen gas. Next gas that now needs to make an appearance is chlorine gas. Now, chlorine gas, everybody here needs to know where this is going to appear. Now, I jumped onto the physics and maths website just before I started this, um, this webinar. Oh, and funnily enough, uh, I, I seem to have closed it, which is rather frustrating. But I jumped onto the physics uh, and maths tutor website to have a look at a paper. And... Um, chlorine makes an appearance every single time in the same place. This is used when you're doing the electrolysis of brine. We know that the electrolysis, thanks to my webinar a few weeks ago, that we make three products, chlorine gas, hydrogen gas, and sodium hydroxide. And when this appears, the chlorine gas tends to, tends to uh, make an appearance. And we know, so method, collect gas. Always a good step to perform. Collect gas using damp and key word here. Please note my capitalization. That is the most common word that's forgotten in this particular one. Um, so using damp blue litmus, using damp blue litmus paper, place in tube place in tube. What are the results? Notice that the method is still this very simple three steps, but there are these key words there. Damp blue litmus paper is going to be your two marks. Third is either going to be collect gas. Uh, yes, right. So what are the results we're going to say? Uh, Lucas, well done for knowing your results, but you've only got one of them. There are two results here, year 11. Can somebody, well done, Amira, outstanding. Right, Amira, you're the first person to receive an accommodation for this webinar. Let's put that on over here. So accommodations, accommodations. I can't spell accommodations. Nice one. Accommodations, first one. I'm going to give a mirror 
and you're going to gain one times one. I like it. I'll do my little scratch card that I did before. Okay, going back to my chlorine. So the results, there are two results from this. The first result, the blue litmus paper will turn red. Now, let me show you why this happens. So, yeah, turns red. And the second one is then, please note the then, then bleaches white. By the way, you don't actually even need the white. You can just simply say it's bleached, ED. Commendations. Thanks very much, Tiffany. So let's just explain that in a chemical equation. The reason being is why does it need to be damp? The reason being is because the chlorine is going to react with water and it's going to turn into hydrochloric acid, hence why you get red and you get a second product of hydrogen chlorate. And that is mild bleach. So now bleaching does not happen instantaneously. Bleaching is a slow process. It's not, it's never rapid. So, but the, the, the acid property of the HCl is very, very rapid. So we see red first, followed by bleaching. It's nice then just to link in the common question of why, why do we, why do we add chlorine to, to tap water, to drinking water, to, to swimming pools? It's a very common question. I'm looking for the answer, year 11. First person who's going to give me the answer. I really do want to shrink that down. Who's going to win that one? Let's have a quick, sh let's see if I can shrink this. There we go. I can also swap that O for a smaller one. There we go. Sodium, sorry, uh, hydrogen chlorate. Uh, Amira, well, oh, Lucas got there in first, kills germs. Lucas, you did have a question mark in it, but I will give it to you. Yes, it kills germs. By the way, Amira also gave an outstanding answer, which is it sterilizes it. Another answer, to sterilize the water. Do not, under any circumstances, say clean. Please don't. Chlorine doesn't clean water. Chlorine will kill the bacteria and make it safe to drink. So it's nice to see a chemical equation appearing there for chlorine and explaining. But just to also let you know, by the way, that it's in equilibrium rather than in... Uh, rather than being unidirectional. But there's your, uh, there's your chlorine test. And please note, I'm emphasizing the damp. That's the most common bit that I tend to see missed. Okay, next gas for us to come across. The next gas is ammonia. Ammonia, of course, is the most important chemical brackets in the history of mankind. It is used to make fertilizers. Top answer. Oh, if you want uses of chlorine, chlorine can be used to sterilize water. Chlorine can be used to make bleach. Chlorine is also used to make um, to make plastics like PVC. Uh, ammonia is smelly. Yes. Do we need to know the chemical equation from Yana? Um, Yana, the answer is they could potentially ask you to explain why it turned the damp litmus paper red. In which case you would say it makes HCl on contact with water. Or you just simply say it makes an acid. So it's not my level. And that uh, I've never, I, I have seen the equation appear at GCSE once, but it was a, they gave you the, the equation and asked you to explain the observations. So the observation, they gave you the equation and wanted you to say, use the equation above to explain why the, the, the litmus paper turned red. And you go, oh, the hydrochloric acid, the hydrochloric acid turned it red. And then explain why it turned bleached, why it was whitened. And you go, oh, the HClO is a bleaching agent. That's all you needed to do. So they gave you the equation. But I need to talk, talk about it and use it. Okay, ammonia. Now, ammonia is a gas. However, most people see it as a solution. But ammonia is a gas. And the test for ammonia gas, let's run our method. So, again, now it's a similar one to chlorine. So, we have step number one, collect gas. We've always got that one, so it's nice to be there. Using damp red litmus. Note the switch. Yeah, using damp, please note once again, this needs to be damp, damp red litmus. We've switched color, 
Please note, damp red litmus paper, place in tube. Place in tube, and your results, it's nice for me to use the word at this point, observations. So my results are going to be red litmus, red litmus paper, red litmus turns blue. And the reason, of course, being that ammonia is an alkali. So ammonia is reacting with water to form ammonium hydroxide. And everybody in this classroom knows that it's the OH minus ions that makes something an alkali. So that ion there is what makes an alkali an alkali. And I have just, Amira, thank you. I've just missed a step. Oh, how embarrassing. Guys, I do apologize. I know you guys think of us teachers as robot robots, and, uh, and, I, and I definitely should not be making mistakes. But Amira has, Amira, you've just got yourself three additional accommodations. Well done. Place in, so, so collect gas using damp. Oh, hang on, Amira. Oh, no, Amira. I haven't got it wrong. I'm sorry, folks. Oh, Amir, you've proper just thrown me. Sorry. U11, my test is correct. Sorry, this is correct. Um, I'm going to move that back up there. Place in tube, and the red limits paper will turn blue. This is correct. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry, Amir. Right, I know what you've done. You've dropped into the test for the ammonium ion. It's totally my fault. I should have caught that instantaneously, and I didn't. Um, no, I know. I know, okay, in confusion. I know. Right, my, my method is correct for ammonia gas. The reason being is, I'll, I'll show you why. That's because in a boiling tube, let's collect some of our gas. I'm going to put a cork in the end of it. The gas is an invisible gas in here, and it exists as NH3. When I remove the cork and I expose it, when I remove the cork, the, gla the gas is gonna start running out, and I will have my damp red litmus paper, my damp red litmus paper nearby, and the damp will cause it now to turn blue. And my equation is correct. The ammonia reacts with the, reacts with the water to form ammonium hydroxide and hence turns it blue. Um, universal indicator turns purple. Yes, they will allow it. Ammonium actually has a pH of 11, which means it should actually turn it blue. It's a weak alkali, Dana. Um, but you don't need to know that level of detail. Uh, but ammonium is a weak alkali, technically. But um, Amira, my test is correct. I'll come to yours later on, I promise. It won't be missed. Right, we're on to our last gas, which is really, really lovely. So we can tick off all the ones here. I've got hydrogen, I've done hydrogen, I've done oxygen, I've done ammonia, and I've done chlorine. We're on to carbon dioxide. Now again, this is a very famous test, it's very well known, but it turns out the test for carbon dioxide is very poorly answered. Is an alkali or base soluble in water? Lucas, and all, right, Lucas, since you've gone and asked, there, are, there is the family of acids, and the opposite of that family is bases. You should be taught acid and base chemistry. And inside that base family is a second family, which is the alkali family. And these are soluble bases. So, no, so the sentence that all alkali are bases, but not all bases are alkali stands true. These are the ones that dissolve in water to give you OH minus ions. Okay, test for carbon dioxide. Like, this one's different. This is not collect gas. This is bubble, bubble gas through lime water. That's a mark. That's, in fact, it's two marks. And everybody misses that one. The bubble gas through is a mark. The second mark is for naming your reagent. 
And so bubble gas through lime water, can I erase my colors? Bubble gas through lime water, results, results. And we're gonna see the lime water. Now I'm gonna say it, lime water turns cloudy. Year 11, you are beyond this now, guys. You are way, way, way past key stage two and key stage three. It's turned cloudy. We're beyond this now. The, but it is allowed at GCSE. What you should say, a better chemical answer is you will form a white precipitate precipitate a white precipitate and that's your correct answer which is a solid now i'm going to give you an equation for this and yana this equation you need ppt uh, uh cian in your exam you would never ever ever write ppt you would always in your gcse write precipitate um and the equation and by the way, Yana, this one is, it needs to be done in the limestone cycle because lime water, lime water has a, has a, a proper chemical name. And that chemical name is calcium hydroxide aqueous. That's going to react with carbon dioxide. And as Lucas absolutely pointed out superbly, you're going to form calcium carbonate solid so you actually form the white precipitate is limestone is calcium carbonate and of course it's a white precipitate because it's insoluble uh but calcium hydroxide uh is aqueous and it's called lime water so i'm just going to quickly show you guys and i know you'll probably think it's ridiculous drawing out these but they do appear and it's absolutely amazing um, how often these pictures appear. These are my bubbles. And I'm going to deliver it into a second tube. Try and do this as best I can. Not doing that very well. I'm going to bubble that into a second tube, which is full of lime water. And those bubbles are then, I'm going to seal off my, my with a cork, with a bung. There we go. Uh, so the gas is going to go up through the delivery tube, bubble through the lime water, and we're going to see it form a white precipitate of calcium carbonate. And Yana, that equation you do need. Can I just, however, do point out, out of all of those, why does he not, uh, why does he not get an accommodation? What for calcium carbonate? Uh, well, Lucas keeps putting question marks at the end of his answer, and I'm not very happy about that. So, Lucas, can you please stop putting question marks and have a bit of confidence, please? Because you're good at this, Lucas, because it is easy and everyone should know it. I also agree with that, Lucas. Um, uh, Yana, just coming back to you, um, just to let you know, out of that equation, more, more times than, than uh, most of the time, it's only, what they only ask for is the formula of the product. They don't tend to ask for the full equation. They will just say, give the chemical formula of the white precipitate that's been formed. And they're just looking for calcium carbonate. Um, cool. So at this point, I come to the end of my gas tests. There is, however, there is, however, just a couple of gases I need to mention now that kind of, always should get a shout out so the first one that i'm going to do this is kind of extra but i say these are extra they're extras because they come up on exams so the first one i'm going to mention is sulfur dioxide now sulfur dioxide is produced when burning any fuel because sulfur is an impurity in fuels like oil and coal and when you burn it in oxygen you get nasty acidic sulfur dioxide gas and that's nasty and there is a simple test for this gas that task that test is bubble through water so the test is bubble through water bubble through water 
and add, secondly, bubble through water, and then add universal indicator. And universal indicator. Now, I shouldn't have to tell you this here, 11, but I wonder if how many people, and Dana, you came into this webinar saying, I'm awesome at chemical tests. What is the observation I'm going to see, Dana? In fact, I'm going to put it out to the whole of year 11. You can, uh, first person to get it can get themselves an accommodation. I'm going to bubble the acidic gas through water. Dana, well done. Result is universal universal indicator will indeed turn red well done turns red and that is of course because it's an acid it won't fizz no it's gonna go red because it's an acid it's clever that by the way people go oh hang on a minute i haven't been told that test oh but you have you know that they're using universal indicator universal indicator detects acids or alkalis and you know that this gas is acidic because this gas causes acid rain. This is the main point of this. Um, so it's really important that you recognize that they have got these cross, these cross links to other topics. So this is why I'm giving these guys a shout out. And that one's appeared a lot. Okay. <laughs> it does, Emily, I'm very impressed. Just to give you an equation. The SO2 reacts with water, ah, with water to form uh, year 11. I didn't really want to mention this, but this really is for Emily's sake. This is called sulfurous acid, not, not sulfuric. Sulfuric is, uh-oh, uh-oh, I've, I've done something bad. Oh, sulfuric acid. H2SO4 is sulfuric acid, and that is a strong acid. pH1, that's the one, that's the only one you need to know. You don't need to know sulfurous, but it's lovely to be able to give the equation. But that is technically what's happening and why it forms an acidic solution. And of course, we all know, thanks to our acid base theory, that if you add sulf any acid to water, it's going to dissociate to give me these ions. And here is what makes an acid an acid. It's nice for me to do the overlap into acid base theory because we've covered both OH minus ions, otherwise known as hydroxide ions. Hydroxide ions are the alkali ions. And the H plus, which is hydrogen ions, and these here are our acid ions. And notice that when you put them together, they will neutralize each other to form water. Isn't that lovely, pH seven. At uh, Y, acid and alkali equals salt and water. It's just nice to do the reminder of these things uh, year, year 11. Okay, so I'm gonna do one more shout out for a gas. Now this one, I'm hoping that you guys are gonna go, oh, it's appeared again. Because this one, once again, and I made my pen really skinny, this once again is ammonia. We've already seen the main gas tests. We've already seen the main gas test. Collect the gas, add damp red litmus paper, and it will turn, it will turn blue. There is a second test of this gas, and that is um, place gas, nice one, place gas near concentrated, concentrated hydrochloric acid, high concentrated HCl. The reason why is because if you have, and I'm gonna draw the diagram, any of you who've had me as a teacher will know this. If I've got a, if I've got concentrate, if I get ammonia gas coming off here, if I get ammonia gas coming out of this one, and I then show it another test tube. But this time, 
that's going to have concentrated HCl, concentrated hydrochloric, this one will fume HCl gas. Now these gases, when they collide, when these gases collide, you form, does anybody in this room want to tell me what I'm about to see when these gases collide? Yes, well done, Lara. So we have formed a white smoke. We're going to see the result of this test. Results are we going to form. Results is a white smoke. And that white smoke is ammonium chloride. And you guys will remember this from my diffusion webinar. We love this one, it's in the tube. And you see the ring form closer to the HCl than the ammonia. So, okay, that box is off gas test. Now the worrying thing is that we're 37 minutes into the webinar, but actually the gas tests are a lot more tricky. The rest of them become a whole lot easier. First thing is flame tests. Let's move on to my flame tests. Okay, so I'm actually gonna go to the top. It's I, I should be better at collecting all my notes. So second one, folks, is we're on to fume. Tiffany, white fumes, uh, white misty fumes, sure. Yeah, they won't mind that, but white smoke is preferred. Okay, flame tests. First thing, this is easy, folks. Know your method. They're going to ask you for this. Just to let you know, the last time this made an appearance, they didn't ask you for a method. They gave you a method that was wrong and you have to spot the mistakes. Method, step one, using a nichrome wire. That's a key thing. Using nichrome wire, place dip, not place, dip in HCl, dip in hydrochloric acid. This removes, removes any leftover left over stuff, <laughs> chemicals from the previous tests, and then pick up sample, put place in sample or dip in sample, dip in sample, and then step four, place in blue. Please note my capitalization, blue Bunsen burner, flame. And guys, this is really important just for me to emphasize the blue because everyone forgets it. What about platinum? Yes, Lucas, you can of course use platinum. You wouldn't because it's super expensive, but it has the same properties as the nichrome wire. Why can you use nichrome? The first reason is because it's inert. You don't want to react with whatever you're putting on the wire or the acid that you're dipping it in. And the second reason is it has a very high melting point. So you could use platinum, but we don't tend to, but it does. Lucas, you're absolutely right. It does make appearances in, a te in tests a lot. Cool, right. So let's just list our colors, folks. And you have five to learn. We have, let's start off from the top down. We have beautiful, I'm gonna make this lovely and fat. So we've got, Gorgeous lithium one plus. So we see our lithium one plus flame there, which is lovely. Followed by, followed by as we go down group one. By the way, please note, I'm highlighting the charge, folks. Don't forget your charge. Next one, we see gorgeous sun yellow sodium. So we see our yellow sodium ion, Na plus one. Do not just say sodium. Do not just say lithium. You must include the charge. Um, Amira, crimson red. Yeah, Amira, you can absolutely say crimson red. Do not say the other one that you've just said. I'll come to that in a minute. Next one is we're going to see our beautiful... I'm going to have to go for more colors here. I'm going to have to go for that guy, I think. But go for that. Oh, that's interesting. It's more like that, really. I'm going to go for that color. We now get potassium one plus... We get our beautiful lilac color. You are not allowed to say pink or purple. 
Next is we're going to get a rather lovely, and this one, of course, makes an appearance more than most, is Calcium 2 Plus. And this is a brick red. Please make sure that you recognize that there's only one brick red, and that's Calcium 2 Plus. And the very last one for you to pick up here, folks, is our beautiful green copper 2 plus so we've got our green flame test at the end so uh blood red no lucas don't put blood red please please okay so guys flame tests are up to you to learn you, you are, there is no equations needed you do not need to know anything about them other than your method and and you need to be able to assign your ions to their colors can you say wet splint? Donna, thank you so much for mentioning it. There is a second method using a wet splint. Um, blood red for calcium, Lucas, just no. I saw orangey yellow on a mark scheme. Okay, yeah, Lucas, they'd probably allow, they'd allow orangey yellow, absolutely, but don't stick with brick red. That's okay, but you can quote either, I don't mind, but brick red is what we like. Um, you can use a damp splint, and damp splints are not, please note, your method is nichrome wire, Dana. Now, I do damp splints in school just because there aren't enough nichrome wires, and the nichrome wires get damaged and broken by students. So wet splints are easier, and they do appear in exams. You have to make it wet so the solid sticks to it, and it has to be wet so that the splint itself doesn't burn, giving a yellow flame and masking it. Okay, so our flame tests are done. I do want to now shout out for one more, which is a Bunsen burner style test, which is there is a test for carbon, a test for carbon, otherwise sometimes known as a test for organic, damn it, organic compounds. So this is a very straightforward one. If you have anything that contains carbon, the method is place in Blue Bunsen burner flame, blue Bunsen burner flame, and it will catch fire slash catch fire slash burn. So it's just nice to just quickly throw out there that there's a, a very simple test for organic compounds uh, out there. And the rest of these, of course, are all ionic. But these flame tests are for ions rather than that one being a test for organic compounds. Okay, so we're on to our next cation test. So we've seen our cations. I'm, I'm really not doing very well on my tablet zooming here. Let's try again over to that point. There we go. Okay, next one. This is now the sodium hydroxide precipitate test. Okay, and this is once again detecting for cations. But this time, folks, you get to feel really happy. At Edexcel, they only want three. That's it, three ions to test for, and those are copper two plus, which we've just previously flame tested, iron two plus, and iron three plus. There are others out there. Um, there are other others out there, but these are the ones you need for Edexcel, so I'm gonna focus on these at, um, in, in the webinar. So this is a very straightforward method. So let's now go on to method. Okay, so collect sample. Collect sample of unknown solution. Please notice that this is in solution in this situation. Add a few drops, a few drops, and that is a mark. Add a few drops of, of sodium, I'll give you the words, of sodium hydroxide. And we're going to see, we're going to see three results. What about ammonium? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do that one, Lucas. Uh, sorry, Dana. I'll come to that when I do the test for the complex ions. I will do that shortly, I promise. Add a few drops of sodium hydroxide. These are the precipitate tests, Dana. I know, I'll come to that. So add a few drops of sodium hydroxide. Results, right. We're gonna see three. So result number one, test tube. So what we're gonna see happen 
is we're going to see a horrible green solid appear. And this is iron 2 plus. So this is the test for iron 2 plus. Because what's going to happen, let me give you the equation. Iron 2 plus is going to react with two hydroxide ions. The reason why two of them is because Fe2 plus has a charge of 2 plus and OH is a minus 1. So we need two of them to cancel it out. And that is green. So there's iron 2 hydroxide, which is a solid, and that guy's green. I always say this to this in my class. How do we remember this is the fact that Fe2 plus contains two E's in the name because of the, because of the 2 plus charge. It just reminds me that I'm going to therefore have a green solution at the end of it because it was Fe2 plus, just two E's. Okay, next one, second result. Same thing, same solution. But this time I add sodium hydroxide and I get a horrible brown precipitate. So this, that's a green precipitate previously. This is a green PPT. Notice I'm dropping into PPT like Cian did earlier, but I just want to ensure you guys that are saying pre precipitate in your exam. This is a brown precipitate. And this, of course, is of iron 3 hydroxide, Fe3+, which has a brown color. We know that one of the, the main properties, top answer for properties of transition metals, they form colored compounds. Last one is I add my sodium hydroxide and I get a blue precipitate. And this, of course, is copper 2 plus. CuOH2, there's the hydroxide. Copper 2 plus has caused it. The equations, just nice to see the equations in descending order. Fe3 plus reacting with three OH minuses instead of two, forming brown iron 3 hydroxide. And then, of course, copper 2 plus reacting with similar to iron 2, two OH minuses to form copper 2 hydroxide. So, um, those are all the precipitate tests that you guys need. Uh, and, it, and it's relatively straightforward. Only three colors, iron 2, iron 3, and copper 2. I am going to do a, a quick shout out. At the very, very end, I'm going to mention a clever question in regards to that. Because um, there was a question on a GCSE paper that foxed an awful lot of people, and I'll come back to that. But quickly going back to your specification, and it's nice to reassure you. Let's quickly tick off the ones I've done. Lithium red. Oh, look, calcium, orange red, sodium yellow, K plus lilac, calcium two plus, orangey red, two plus, blue green. Next, right, we've just dropped into, and we've just ticked off these guys. Now, there is a reason why I haven't done that, done the ammonium one test, and don't worry, I'll come to that in, in at the end. I tend to group these in slightly different ways. Um, the next test that we're going to move on to, and we're on 10 to 8 at this point. Let's skip over to here. Right. Next test. Are that This is the halide ion test. So this is group 7. Now, I, uh, year, year 11, I am going to give you guys a webinar on group 7. It is one of the hardest groups uh, at GCSE, and they really do make it tough with group 7. I think I'm just going to move that over a little bit so I don't crash into my precipitate transition metal tests. Right, halide ions, let's list them, folks. So here are my halide ions. Uh, I don't know why it's making me do that. So I've got fluoride, chloride, bromide, and iodide. Now, the great thing is we can immediately eliminate fluoride. There's a reason for this. And they can, they can ask it, and they have asked it. Why can't you test question that goes with this? Why not test for F minus? Why not test for fluoride ions? And the answer is they are all, all, emphasizing the all, all, they are all soluble. There are no fluorides that are insoluble. What that means is you can never see them as a precipitate. So too little of it. No, that's not true, darn it. There's loads of fluoride. In fact, it's in the water. Yeah. Uh, because fluorines, be careful, Cain. It's not fluorinous. Oh dear. It's not fluorines, it's fluoride compounds. Fluorides are soluble. Please be careful with that. All fluoride compounds, I should put that. All, I'm changing that. I'm changing it to, instead of they're all, 
I'm just gonna, in fact, change the whole thing. All fluoride, all fluoride compounds are soluble, which means we never see it. Compounds are soluble. So we don't see that one. So we never test for it. You can't. Right, moving swiftly onto the three that we can test for. So how do we test for them? Let's do a method. So method to test for all three of these. You've got to love chemistry for that. At least they're all the same test. So method number one, collect sample. Collect sample. Collect sample, add dilute nitric acid. Please note, I, there is a very specific acid here. Add dilute nitric acid. The reason being is it removes carbonate ions. And this does come up. It, by the way, I think you're allowed at GCSE to say it removes impurities. But if I'm going to teach this, I may as well teach you it properly. It removes carbonate ions. It'll destroy them. And then you're going to, secondly, after you add dilute nitric acid, and then I'm going to put followed by, followed by adding silver nitrate. Now, please note that's nitrate. Please note I'm underlining the nitrate. Why nitric acid? Because to make silver nitrate, you need nitric acid. Why can I not uh, question, and at this point, question, why not hydrochloric acid? Why not that? Answer, year 11, why can't I use hydrochloric acid? Who's going to get that one? That's hard. Come on, Donna, you're awesome at tests. Where is she? Chlorine, HCl. Lucas, you're giving me great sentences there. Cyan, don't say chlorine. Remember, chlorine is Cl2. Donna, I am well impressed with you, young lady. You're absolutely right, because it's going to give us chloride ions, and we'll get a false positive for chloride. I'm super impressed. Well done. And it will react and can react to form a precipitate. Lucas, what a great team effort that was. Yes, that's superb. We've got great stuff there. Lucas with ionizes and reacting to form a precipitate. We've got Dana giving me the CL minus signs, followed with Cyan closely. That's great. Yeah, uh, will react. Will react due. Will react due to presence. presence of Cl minus ions. Why? Because we know that acids, when acids go into water, they ionize. Acid base theory, and there's my chloride ion. So it'll react with it due to the chloride ions that are present. Okay, swiftly on to the next one. Removes impurities. I'm also going to put removes the proper one is removes carbonate ions cool okay so what are we gonna see what are my results we've got our method we need our results right so we're gonna have three different results we're going to have the silver nitrate is going to react with let's say we had sodium chloride and it's going to form these two sodium nitrate and silver chloride. Now, just to point out, that is the full chemical equation. However, some of this doesn't need to be there. This is where year 11, I do apologize for this because this now steps up a level now up to level eight, nine in chemistry. Because now we drop into this is a full equation, full chemical equation. And now we also pick up an ionic equation. And in the ionic equation, which is far more likely at GCSE, we have Ag1 plus reacting with Cl minus. There's the ion, and we get a white precipitate, a white PPT of silver chloride. Right, going to speed this up. What do we now get for bromide? So I now get silver nitrate 
reacting with the bromide or silver one plus reacting with the bromide ions to form silver bromide, which is a cream PPT. Next, we then have silver nitrate. I've suddenly realized I can easily put underneath this the full equation. Silver nitrate is going to react with the iodide ions, giving us silver iodide, which is a yellow precipitate. It's nice to see. Let's do this reaction with sodium iodide. Let's just lob in sodium iodide to keep that the same. And I'm going to get, of course, the complete equation would give me sodium nitrate, which I don't see because all nitrates are soluble. Uh, we're going to get sodium nitrate again, which is aqueous, so we don't see it. And we're going to get silver iodide, which is yellow as a solid state symbols making an appearance. So great chemistry, great tests. And guys, you've just got to know it. I'm going to do a, I'm going to do a webinar on group seven. So in my webinar in group seven, I will revisit these tests for the halide ions in relationship to the group. It's nice to spot that they're getting darker, similar to the elements in group seven. So white, cream, and yellow. I'm just going to do a really quick shout out to a GCSE question that was really, really horrible. Because what they did was they said in the question, this was probably the hardest. I made a quiz for the test. Daniel, thank you so much. What a lovely thing for you to do. Really, really impressed with you, young man. Thanks. Hardest question I ever saw on the halide ions at GCSE. By a mile, level nine. Question. A student, a student had a mixture, a mixture of sodium iodide and sodium chloride. He performs, he adds, he adds HNO3, nitric acid, and silver nitrate. Uh, um, what color did he see? And I have never, what color, I'm, I have never, what color did he see? I have never seen a question like it at GCSE before. And it was really, really horrible that because the students didn't like the answer that they had to give. Would anybody like to give the answer on a GCSE paper for that? What color did he see? Lucas, no, he didn't. And that was the problem. It was really, really mean this. Hard as, I, th I think it hasn't appeared again because it was so hard that not many people realized what they were doing. I'm going to have, I have got NAI and NACL. I'm going to add, and these are both in the same beaker, and I'm going to add silver nitrate. I'm going to form a mixture of products. I'm going to get silver chloride, which was white, and silver iodide, which was yellow. And what color did I see? I see cream. Now, that was incredibly evil. However, there was a saving grace in this. It was yellow because it's darker. No, they mixed together and the white paled it and made it go cream. That's nasty. I know, Lucas, there was a saving grace, however. It then said in the next question, the student, the student identified, identified the wrong halide. Suggest, suggest, no, it wasn't suggest, wrong halide. What ion did he identify? 
And this question was really evil because if you didn't get the first bit, if you didn't get the first bit, you were going to be absolutely stuffed on the second. But the second one, I will always say to students, if you read a question and you're going, wow, I don't know what's going on, read the next one. It might give you a hint. And he thought it was bromide because it told you what was in it. So if he's not choosing iodine or chloride, then he must have gone for bromide and the observation would have been cream. So it hinted at what the observation was in the previous question. Really, really mean, Very, level nine all day long. I've never seen it since. Really, really tough that. But it was great. It was a great exam question, proper stretch and challenge. Okay, let's go quickly back to my, my, uh, my list. I have now covered the silver nitrates. Right, I'm nearly done, folks. I'm gonna be done in eight minutes. That means an hour and 10 minutes, and then we can run through the questions. Okay. So the last part of my webinar, which tests have we got left to go? We have the complex ions. Complex ion tests. Right, we all know at GCSE there are four complex ions. No, five complex ions. We've got nitrate. We have got the hydroxide ion. We have the carbonate ion. We have the sulfate ion. And we have the ammonium ion. So we have got five complex ions. Shouldn't circle it. I mean, I can circle it. There we go. Five complex ions, four negative ions, and one positive. Right, I'm not going to waste your time, Year 11. There are tests for every single one of these, but you do not need them all for GCSE. First thing, you do not need to know the test for the nitrate ion. You do need to know the test for a hydroxide ion, and this is add, collect sample, add, universal indicator and it will turn purple as your result nice and easy not too complicated add universal indicator and then it will turn purple next test for the carbonate ion nice and easy method collect sample add acid now can i just point out that you should name one it doesn't it doesn't matter which acid you choose, and I would recommend choosing hydrochloric. Add hydrochloric acid. Doesn't matter. You can choose any acid. You can choose sulfuric. You can choose nitric. It doesn't matter. And what will you see? You will see bubbles. Do not say that you're going to see a gas. Don't. Yeah, because gases are invisible. Carbon dioxide is invisible. You're going to see bubbles. They're gonna follow this up with immediately drop into lime water, but the test for the carbonate ion is independent. It is add acid, you will see bubbles. And then bubble that gas through lime water, and then bubble gas, yeah, we may as well tack it on, bubble gas through lime water, through L water, and it will form a white precipitate form of calcium carbonate. Nice. Okay, so we're on to our last two ions. Let's move these down. Right, we're on to the sulfate ion. Nice and easy. Method, we are going to add hydrochloric acid to remove carbonate ions. Remove, same thing as with the silver nitrate test. Remove carbonate impurities oh it's nice look at that let's get both words in there just give that all the time that's outstanding chemistry and then followed by followed by barium chloride and note i'm giving a formula year 11. barium now you need a, you need a, a formula for this folks at this stage so a formula now appears let's look at the equation b a2 plus reacts with SO4 2 minus to form white barium sulfate. White PPT of barium sulfate. 
Next, very last one in terms of our cations. Right, the test for the ammonium ion. And by the way, sadly, this is a horrible test and comes up on a regular basis, and I hated it. So, method, add sodium hydroxide, add NaOH, and warm it. Warm mixture. Right. Damp, blue, that red, damp, red litmus paper will turn blue. The reason why is because the sodium hydroxide is going to rip off a proton and form water and ammonia gas. And there's your damp red litmus paper test making a reappearance. So at this point, I need to do a shout out to Amira. And that's the test for ammonium, not ammonia. So please, please, please be careful. Let's go back at this point to our specification. We can tick off. We can tick off the test for the, for the ammonium ion, for the sulfate ion, for the carbonate ion. Right. Last two tests. Presence of water. Okay. We're nearly done, and another equation is about to appear. I'll move it over to this side. Right. There is a test for water, and that test is anhydrous. Method, add, and please note my capitalization, anhydrous. This means without water, anhydrous copper sulfate. Now, copper sulfate, when it's got no water, is white. So add anhydrous copper sulfate. Results, it will turn from white from white to blue. Colourless to blue. No, Emily, you're not allowed to say colourless. You have to say white. Isn't that frustrating? Because colourless means colourless, and white is, is colourless, but uh, colourless only gets used for solutions. This is a true white powder. Let me quickly show you. So anhydrous, anhydrous copper sulfate, just really quickly, images, is true white. There you go. So that's bright white, and when you add water to it, it turns to this deep blue. Cool. Last one. Again, sticking with the water theme, there is a test for purity. So test for purity. Now you can do this with anything. There is a test for purity. And that test is either, can we say tur water turns cobalt chloride paper pink? Oh, Crystal, I'm really impressed. Um, the cobalt chloride is, is a test for water, by the way. If you're going to use cobalt chloride crystal, you have to be really careful because you have to say anhydrous cobalt chloride and it turns from blue to pink. You've got to give the before and after color. So be really careful. I'd stick with anhydrous copper sulfate considering it's on your specification, but it's nice to know an additional one. Oh, I've forgotten my equation. There's an equation for this. CuSO4 plus 5H2O. And this is white, no water. It now binds to water and it forms what is called a hydrated salt. This is hydrated copper sulfate and it's blue. Hydrated copper sulfate and it is blue. So that equation, Yana, definitely want to know, comes up a lot. So do watch out for that guy. Really important, that one. Right, test for purity is a melting point test. Melting point test. And your specification does something very interesting. 
which is it specifically mentions it specifically mentions water. So melting point would be results would be of course it will ice will melt melt at zero degrees Celsius. You could alternatively do a boiling point test, which is easier, of course, for water. Boiling point test result it will boil boils at 100 celsius and it tells you whether or not something's pure by seeing whether or not the melting point is matches the one that everyone of course knows they're, they're doing that because what they're saying is uh that you're expected to know the melting point and boiling point of water which seems very reasonable so if they said to you that stephen has done a test on water that he collected and got a melting uh, got a boiling point of 105 degrees celsius what does this tell us about the water? You would say it's impure. That's the question that commonly gets asked. They reverse it rather than going in the forward direction. Give you a melting point that isn't correct and saying, do you understand that it would be the impurities causing it? Right, guys, I have just covered every chemical test on your specification. Just to quickly go back to here, methods for each test, anions and cations, equations for each one, writing a method for each test, write extra ones, indicators I have covered, universal indicator, purple in, in, in alkali, red in acid, I do want to mention phenol phthalene, pink in alkali, colorless in acid, test for sulfur dioxide I have done, purity I have done it, test for ammonia with the second test, why is he there again when he's on there? Because the gas test has two tests. There is, there is damp red litmus paper turns blue or concentrated hydrochloric acid and you will see white smoke. Watch out. The next one is group seven. I'm going to do separately on the webinar. So this is going to be see you later webinar. So, and then of course, the last one is the alkene. It's nice for me to bring in the alkene. I'm going to do an organic webinar as well. But the test for alkenes is bromine water, which turns from orange to colorless. Right. It's taken an hour and 13 minutes to go all the way through. Let's now have a look at some of your questions from your preliminary work, and you can mark them off as you've done them. So straight away, ammonium chloride contains positive, uh, uh, oppositely charged ions. State the formula of each. Ammonium, NH4. Please note, underline formula, not name. Watch out. If it wants the formula and you put the name, you will lose the mark. NH4 plus and the negative ion is Cl minus. If they wanted the names, that is ammonium and chloride respectively. Describe a chemical test for the, for the ammonium ion. Take a sample of the unknown substance, ask sodium hydroxide solution, warm the solution using damp red litmus paper, place at the end of the tube and it will turn blue. Three marks, did that in the webinar. Next, describe the chemical test for chloride ions. Take a sample, add nitric acid to remove carbonate ions, followed by silver nitrate solution. A white precipitate will form of silver chloride solid. Next, what does the symbol mean? Reversible. Here's the ammonium test. So identify the white solid. It's nice for it to make a reappearance from our, our diffusion um, our diffusion and states of matter webinar. I hope everyone got this right. So identify the white solid is ammonium chloride. Why does it, what does this tell you about the speed of the molecules? Ammonium molecules travel at higher speed compared to hydrogen molecules. They have traveled further in the same time. Give the precaution for any acid. Acids are corrosive. And the precaution is wear gloves. Don't put goggles on. Unless you're throwing it in people's faces, gloves are far more important. Uh, once again, same one appearing. Process diffusion, we know this. Again, sorry about the repeat question. The diagram shows that ammonia has traveled further in the same time. Right, into our method, once again, for the ammonium ion. Guys, I have pulled these from past GCSE papers. Look how often the ammonium ion is making an appearance. Please make sure this one is at your top priority to learn. Solution X is sodium hydroxide. The gas given off is ammonia, and the final color of the litmus paper was blue. She used this method for containing chloride ions, added dilute nitric acid, added solution Y, white precipitate. Why the acid? To remove carbonate ions or to remove impurities. 
suggests the identity of Y, silver nitrate, and the white precipitate, silver chloride. Next. Right, it's nice to have a bit of bonding. Ammonia, of course, is a compound because it's NH3. More, it, it, by the de definition of a compound, two or more different atoms chemically bonded. And it is a compound, and the type of bonding is covalent. Hydrogen chloride is a compound, also covalent, all non-metals. Oxygen is an element, and it's also co covalent because it goes around diatomically as O2. Magnesium oxide is a compound, and it's ionic. Give the formula for magnesium oxide, Mg2 plus O2 minus, both from my periodic table, and I'm going to do cross and down for those numbers, and I get Mg2O2, and it's wrong. This is the problem when you use, I, I do like the X factor trick. I've seen on mark schemes, reject, remove impurities. Oh, wow, Lucas. That's really interesting. So they actually are pushing you now at GCSE even to go for carbonate ions. And that's, Lucas, why I don't teach cheap chemistry. I like to teach it properly. So carbonate ions, stick with that one. So this formula is incorrect. The reason why is because the charges are going to cancel. So the formula will simply be MgO. So watch out for them. Give the state symbol for hydrogen chloride. At, um, at room temperature, it is a gas. Everyone's going to pick aqueous. Watch out. Be careful. When hydrogen chloride is in water, you get HCl aqueous, which is hydrochloric acid. But if you have HCl gas, that's hydrogen chloride, and it is a gas at room temperature. Next, balance the equation. I hope everyone found that okay. Great GCSE balancing there. That was a tricky one. So at one point in this ex extraction, the temperature reaches 1,100, which two are solids at room temperature. Spot the two with a, boil a melting point higher than that. And so I've got those two, just name them. Suggest the type of bonding in neodymium fluoride. Everyone freaks out. Never heard of neodymium, but it's a metal. You find it on the table, and it is a metal. It's got a high melting point, so it's got to be ionic. If it was covalent, it'd be boiling. So it's a metal and non-metal, so it's ionic. Now, this one was the hardest question on the paper, by a mile. How were you meant to work out the formula of neodymium oxide? The answer came from the previous question, because it told you the formula of neodymium fluoride. This is hard, folks. This is level nine chemistry now at GCSE. We know that fluorine, fluoride, sorry, that fluoride is one minus. I've got F minus, and there are three of them. That means if I've got three F minuses and one neodymium, Neodymium must have the opposite charge, which is plus three. Well done, Lucas. Now we can build neodymium oxide because we now know that neodymium is ND, ND3 plus. Oxygen is oxide, is always O2 minus, cross and down. Neodymium 2O3. Hard that, hardest question on the whole paper. That's really great chemistry. If you can do that, you can do anything. Explain why two questions combined is evil. Why is it malleable? And why is it a good conductor of electricity? Neodymium is in layers and those layers can slide. Tick, tick. Neodymium has delocalized electrons. Tick. Which can flow through the structure to conduct electricity? Next, question number five, right? Sodium hydroxide is added. First thing is, it said iron three plus. You've got to know your colors, folks. And it says, what am I going to see with sodium hydroxide? I'm going to see a brown precipitate. Next, the cation other than Fe three plus present by what happened, right? They heated the mixture after adding sodium hydroxide. Guys, remember I said that they mixed the halide ions together once upon a time. Well, they're now mixing cations. 
They've now mixed together iron three plus and ammonium, which means when they add the sodium hydroxide, you're going to see the brown precipitate. But then also when you warm it, you're going to turn damp litmus paper blue because you're going to give off ammonia, which means the second cation was ammonium. Explanation. Litmus paper turned blue. You don't need to give anything else. You could have also said the ammonia was an alkali as well. It's probably also accepted. Identify that the anion present. What do they do? Silhydrochloric acid. Oh, I've just made a mistake. Ah! Oh, darn it. Read the question. Hydrochloric acid, barium chloride, white precipitate. It's not a chloride ion, folks. Very sorry. It is a sulfate ion, barium chloride. God, what an easy mistake to make. I saw white precipitate and I jumped. Do apologize. Next, name the reducing agent in the equation. This is all about redox, folks. So I've got zinc and with iron three. And what's happening is the iron three is going from plus three to plus two. It's gained an electron. And the zinc has gone from neutral to plus two. It's lost two electrons. The reducing agent is the one that lowered somebody's charge, and that is zinc. And by the way, I got that from Rig. Reduction is the gain of electrons. Well, hang on a minute. The reducing agent is the person doing it, the person giving away the electrons. So that's going to be zinc in this situation. Explanation, zinc has given electrons to iron 3, reducing it in its charge. Right, suggest two reasons why platinum is a suitable method to use with the wire in this test. It is inert and it has a high melting point. Why should the platinum wire be cleaned each test to remove previous substances being tested? So it doesn't contaminate future ones. Next, why is the luminous flame not suitable? Right, the luminous flame... This, these words have freaked out a couple of students in their mock. The luminous flame is otherwise known as the safety flame. It's giving off a bright yellow color. What that means is the yellow color of the safety flame will dominate and you won't be able to see the flame color from the chemicals. It's called a masking. The yellow color dominates, so hard to see the flame color of the chemical. Next. Three metal compounds are treated with separate with three reagents. Silver nitrate, barium chloride, sodium hydroxide. Right. Give the name of compound X. Right. Compound X gave flame test yellow. So I go Na1+. plus. Right. Precipitate with silver nitrate, white, Cl-. minus. My answer is sodium chloride. Flame test, red, lithium-1+. plus. Precipitate with barium chloride, SO4, 2-. Name the compound, lithium sulfate. You have that on your mock, folks. Identify the cation present in Z, a green precipitate with sodium hydroxide. It's Fe2+. Next, describe a chemical test other than heating that could show that it contains carbonate ions. Add acid, one mark, and bubble gas through lime water. Results. Fizzing will be seen, and the lime water will turn cloudy. Four marks for three points. Next, here's our precipitates appearing in their formulae. Compound X is blue, crystalline solid. It contains copper 2 plus and sulfate ions and water of crystallization. A student dissolved it in X and added sodium hydroxide. They obtained a blue precipitate. Give the formula of the blue precipitate. Please note that all the hints are in the question. Copper 2 plus... You just had to remember that sodium hydroxide is OH1 minus, which means I'm going to need two of them. So see you, OH2. Why is the acid added to remove carbonate ions? Give the formula of the water of crystallization. You just have to know, folks, that there are five waters in that crystal. It's just something you've got to know. How would you outline a method for carrying out a flame test? Nichrome wire, wash in acid. Oh, oh, was in acid. Nice. Try again. Wash in acid. Followed by pick up solid, put in blue flame. And we're done. That brings us to the end of our webinar. Right.
Another hour and a half on my webinars. Stop sharing. Let's bring it back. Right, guys. Thank you so much for coming along. I know it's been a long one, but we've done a mammoth amount of chemistry in that video. We've just done, got approximately, give or take, about eight to nine hours worth of chemistry lessons in a one-hour webinar, and that that's not even including the going through exam style questions. So I really hope you found it useful. I hope that it's been nice to clear up some of those common misconceptions that people have, but it's been really nice to hang out as always year 11. It's always really enjoyable and I know how much you guys appreciate it. Thank you so much to all you guys who are regular attendees. I'm really, 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 it's really important to me and it, and it, it makes me really proud of you guys taking part in this. All right, guys, I'm going to leave you be. Have a lovely rest of your evening, and I'll see you all bright and early tomorrow. Have a lovely evening, year 11 and year 10. Thanks for coming along, guys. See you soon. Bye.